Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are continuing a recent series on this YouTube channel where I go in-depth into what I think each team should do with their cap space during the upcoming free agency period. So far, we've done the two teams with the largest amount of cap space in the Atlanta Hawks and the New York Knicks. And today we are moving on to the team with the third most cap space in the Detroit Pistons. However, before I talk about the Pistons, I just want to remind you to leave a like and subscribe. I've been enjoying all the support you've been providing me on my videos lately, and I hope to see that continue. Remember, if you subscribe, it's helping me out because I get more support, and it's also helping you out because you gain access to more basketball coverage, and who doesn't love basketball, right? However, without any further ado, let's get into the Detroit Pistons. Like I said before, they have the third most cap space out of any team in this upcoming offseason, off and that is $30 million of cap space. They have a couple solid current pieces, which is what I will start this off by talking about. At the point guard, uh, they have Derrick Rose, who at this point in his career is a guy who can come off the bench and play 20-plus minutes and give you some solid uh, time off the bench. He's mostly just a slasher-type scorer who has some playmaking capabilities but doesn't give you much on defense and really can't shoot the ball from the perimeter. He still is a valuable player, and this season he was in the running for sixth man of the year, I believe, but he's also not the MVP candidate that he once was. However, I'm sure the Pistons could still get a late first-round pick in return for Derrick Rose if they were to trade him. And if they do keep him around, he's a good culture setter, and he's on a solid contract that really is not taking up too much space at all on their books, considering the quality of player he is. So if they want to keep him around to be a team leader for the young guys moving forward into the future, that could be a solid idea as well. On the wing, it starts with Luke Kennard. He's probably the best wing player that they have at this moment as a shooting specialist who also can put the ball on the floor a little bit. He's not a great defender, and the playmaking leaves a little bit to be desired, but his overall skill as a shooter makes him a valuable NBA player. The Suns were considering trading their first-round pick in this upcoming draft straight up for him at the trade deadline, so if they were interested in trading Luke Kennard, they could fetch a solid return for him despite him coming off of any, a pretty serious injury this past season. And if they do keep him around, he's young enough that he could be a solid piece of their rebuild moving forward. Svee Mikhailuk is probably their second best wing at the moment. He's a three-point specialist to the T of the word, or to the T of the term, I should say, because it's multiple words. But uh, he is... Probably a better shooter than even Luke Kennard is, but he doesn't do the other stuff as well as Kennard. He uh, shoots the ball better from the three-point line than he does inside the arc, as I believe he shot around... Oh, no, I think that may be incorrect. I think he was about 42% on threes and 40% on three-point shots. Or 40% on threes, 42% inside the arc. But overall, he is mostly going to give you contributions from the arc, on the offensive end of the floor, he can't do much in terms of playmaking, and he's not much of an offensive rebounder either, as he's not a tremendous athlete. But the shooting is his main skill, and on defense, he is certainly serviceable. This past season, his on-off impact was quite significant, as the Pistons played far better with him on the court than they did with him off the court. So for that reason, I think that he's a solid piece, and similar to Luke Kennard, he's young enough that he could be a part of their rebuild moving forward. He was an older guy when he came into the league and uh, after going to Kansas for all four seasons, despite going to Kansas for all four seasons, he was only 20 when he came into the league. So you would think that he is older than he actually is. Uh, sorry, I did not word that very well. But um, Luke Kennard and Steve Mikhailuk are the two primary guys on the wing that could be long-term pieces for this team. Bruce Brown is another guy I really like. He is a non-guaranteed deal for next season, but I really think that the Pistons should look to bring it back because he's a solid defensive player, and he uh, took a big jump in his shooting production from two seasons ago into last year. We saw him 
take a step forward as a ball handler and a playmaker as he was even manning the point at times for the Pistons. So I think that he could definitely be a piece they could look to keep around. Tony Snell has a player option for next year that I'm sure he'll accept because it's um, in the $11 million range, if I'm not mistaken. So he'd be silly to decline that option. And I'm sure that he'll be back on this roster for next year. I don't think that he's much of a piece moving forward, however, because he doesn't offer much outside of spot-up shooting on the offensive end. And although he is a good defender, he's getting up there in years. And for a team that's really looking to trigger a youth movement and start a rebuild, I don't think that he fits well on the timeline for this team. The last wing that they have on the roster at the moment is Kyrie Thomas, who's a guy with a non-guaranteed contract. He barely played last season, and I don't really know anything about him. So I would assume they're probably not going to pick up the guarantee, but he is only 24, and if there's something they like about him, they could guarantee that contract and have him around on the minimum for next season. Now we get into the big man position. The best big man that they have is Blake Griffin. Uh, a couple of seasons ago when we saw him maybe have his best season ever in the 2018-19 season, the last time, the last season that he was healthy for, we saw Blake be dominant. He took a huge step forward in his shooting ability, his playmaking improved, his ball handling improved, and he looked like a legit player who could be a really good option on a really good playoff team. However, last year he struggled with injuries, and at the moment his contract looks to be a significant overpay. I think that if they could move on from him, they probably would and try to continue with their rebuild. However, I don't think that that's going to be possible due to his lofty contract. So he will likely be on the roster as their best player moving forward up until that contract expires. The other significant big man that they have is Sekou Dumbuya, I think is how it's pronounced. I've heard Dumboya or Dumbuya. I'm not sure which one it is. Let me know in the comment section down below, Pistons fans. But Sekou has a chance to develop into a solid NBA player. If he can figure out the shooting, he needs to take a significant step forward in that. As last year, he was one of the worst shooters in the league. He shot about 25% from the three-point line, if I'm not mistaken, and only about 38% overall. So those are very horrible uh, shooting efficiencies, and he will need to take a step forward there if he wants to be a serviceable NBA player in his next sophomore season. However, there are some good things about him. He's a solid finisher at the in at the rim. He's athletic, and that allows him to be a, a really good defensive player who is versatile and can guard multiple positions. So if he can figure out the shooting, there's a chance that Sekou Dumboya could be a solid NBA player in his future. The last guy that's under contract for next year is Justin Patton. He is a non-guarantee. I know nothing about this guy other than that he's a center who went to Creighton. So similar with Kyrie Thomas, maybe they pick up this guarantee, maybe they don't. Quite honestly, I don't really care. And I, <laughs> like I said, I don't know anything about him, so I really can't make a judgment on whether that would be a good idea or not. In terms of outgoing free agents, there are six guys uh, that are potentially could be leaving this uh, roster in the upcoming season. The most guy of most prominence is clearly Christian Wood, but I'm going to talk about him a lot more later, so we will gloss over him a bit for now. After him, John Henson and Thon Maker are some guys that they could look back to look to bring back on very minimal deals as guys that are serviceable centers off the bench. Uh, Langston Galloway is a three-point specialist who is small, only about 6'2", and he plays the shooting guard, can't really handle the ball, so immediately that's a bit of a drawback as if you're going to have a guy that's that small, you probably want him to be your primary ball handler. And for that reason, I think that he uh, works best when he's playing alongside a big, big wing that can create open looks for him. That could have been Blake Griffin, but with Griffin not appearing to be his best self at the moment due to age and injuries, I think that they would be best letting Galloway walk probably to a contender because who can't use shooting? 
Uh, Brandon Knight was a guy that we saw get some solid minutes with the Pistons last year. I think that he could sign with a contender to be a backup guard who can shoot the ball right from three. Uh, if you're the Pistons, I don't really see much of a need for this guy. Um, yeah, Jordan McRae is another backup point guard type who they did trade for at the trade deadline last year, and for that reason, I believe that they wanted to get the bird rights on him so that they could make a real run at re-signing him next season. So it appears that he's a guy that they want to have on their roster as a veteran presence. So I could see him sticking around. Maybe he'll develop some trade value and you could deal his deal for a uh, second round pick at the trade deadline next year. So I could see some value in keeping him around. In the draft, the Pistons have the seventh overall pick. Some guys I like for them here are Killian Hayes, Tyrese Maxey, Patrick Williams, and Denny Avdia. Hayes would be the primary guy that I would look for if I were them as a player who could come in and kind of be the centerpiece for their rebuild. Uh, good ball handler, good playmaker, hopefully can be that primary option for your offense moving forward in the future. Maxey is another guy that could potentially grow into being a primary option for an offense if he can figure out his jump shot and utilize his athleticism to be a good finisher in the lane. I think that Maxi has massive defensive upside, and for that reason I view him as a top 10 player in this draft class. I'm not sure that the Pistons would take him, though, because the consensus seems to have him closer to being a late lottery pick than where I have him in the top 10. Patrick Williams is a guy that the Pistons are rumored to really like, and while generally I think that they should look to draft a guard, Williams would make a lot of sense for them moving forward as a wing player who is very versatile and can guard multiple positions. If he can develop his offensive game, he could be a very nice player and could slot in alongside Christian Wood in the front court for this team moving forward. Finally, Danny Avdia is... A uh, big wing option who could be a very nice uh, primary or secondary creator who can handle the ball well and be a solid playmaker as well. He also is a good team defender. There's questions about his on-ball stuff as well as his shooting ability, but in general, I'm a big fan of Danny, and I believe in him becoming a solid NBA player. Those are my primary options for them in the draft, but in the end, I think that Killian Hayes or Patrick Williams are the two most likely guys for the Pistons to go with here. In terms of possible incoming free agents, finally we get to the reason why you guys all clicked on this video. The number one thing that the Pistons need to focus on here is retaining Christian Wood. You're a team without a lot of hope moving forward for the future, and you found a diamond in the rough in Christian Wood. After the Andre Drumming trade, we saw him produce good numbers, and I was really intrigued by what I saw from him as a guy who can step out, space the floor, and be a solid shooter, and also had some ability in the post as a guy who can really just score the ball in general on offense. I think that Christian Wood is the type of player that you want to see a guy like Obi Toppin grow into. Uh as a guy who's in this upcoming draft. So really Christian Wood is one of the few things that this franchise really has going for them along with that seventh overall pick. And I think that they should fork over the necessary dough to keep him around. When I was talking about Christian Wood for the Knicks in my video yesterday, I said that I would be willing to offer him a contract as high as four years, $60 million. If I were the Pistons, I would actually be willing to go a little over and beyond that. I would offer him as much as four years, 72 probably, if I were the Pistons, if it was completely necessary and you were in a bidding war against someone, just because I think that it's so imperative that they keep him around as one of the few pieces they have for this rebuild looking forward. He would help the future look a lot less bleak over there in Detroit. Outside of retaining Christian Wood, I think that uh, this team should really be looking at two things in this upcoming offseason. Getting some cheap, tradable veterans that they could move at the trade deadline next year for some potential value in terms of draft capital, and also reclamation projects, which would be young players that they can take and improve to make them solid NBA players and guys that can contribute on their team in the future. For the cheap tradable veterans category, a few names I have are Jeff Teague, Etwan Moore, and Gerald Green. Etwan Moore struggled to 
provide any sort of assistance to the Pelicans in the bubble as he really kind of fell out of the rotation. And for that reason, NBA teams may overlook him this offseason. So if the Pistons could bring him in on a minimum deal, he could re-garner some trade value and some value with contenders around the NBA due to his ability to shoot the ball. And for that reason, I think that you could really look to bring him in if you're the Pistons and look to get some value out of that that spot because that's something that the Knicks did to some success. I know the Knicks don't usually have success and you do usually don't want to replicate what the Knicks do, but they did sign Marcus Morris last, last offseason and they were able to turn him into a first round pick from the Clippers. So uh, getting a guy like this could be very valuable for them and because of Etwan Moore's recent struggles, he could be a gettable guy. Jeff Teague also struggled at the outset of last season as he was brought in to be a backup point guard for the Hawks, and in the time he spent there, he really struggled to get in any sort of rhythm coming off the bench, uh, relieving Trey Young of some minutes. For that reason, once again, he's a guy that they could bring in to play that backup point guard spot and hopefully regarner some trade value so that they could cash that in at the trade deadline and get some draft capital. The last guy is Gerald Green, who is coming off of a surgery, major surgery. I forget whether it's ACL or uh, Achilles, but he missed the entire season. And if he can come in next year and show that he can still be a versatile wing defender who can also shoot the ball well from distance... Once again, this is a guy that I could see them getting some draft capital in exchange for at next year's trade deadline. Contenders are going to be looking for guys who can shoot, and Etwan Moore and Gerald Green are certainly both candidates for that. There's other names that are out there that could be some cheap, tradable veterans, and I really think that that is something that the Pistons should be looking into. In the Reclamation Project section, guys like Josh Jackson, Jabari Parker, and Harry Giles are all certainly candidates Josh Jackson struggled both on the court and off the court in his run with the Phoenix Suns, and that led to him having his fifth year option decline, fourth year option declined, and he made his way over to the Grizzlies now. So the Grizzlies won't have bird rights on him, and I think that they are unlikely to bring him back. So he's going to be looking to sign a deal. I think that you could get him for a very low number for a guy that was drafted fourth overall in the draft just a couple seasons ago so if you're the Pistons he could be a guy that you could look at as a potential answer on the wing in upcoming seasons certainly there was a lot of potential there for him coming out of Kansas and although it hasn't worked out so far if the Pistons see that potential and believe that they can rekindle the flame with Josh Jackson it's certainly a viable idea Jabari Parker is another player that I believe has some value and could improve if he's willing to accept a different role. I believe that he could be a bit of a small ball center coming off the bench for a team where he would have some value as a rim runner who can finish exceedingly well in the paint for a guy who's only six foot eight. Obviously, he would be a small center, like I said before, but because of that ability to finish, it would make him viable at that position. His defense has also gotten a bit underrated. He was very bad at the beginning of his NBA career, but in the past couple of seasons, he's shown improvement on that end. And last year in Atlanta, he was actually a decent defensive player. And for those reasons, I think that he's still worth an NBA contract. However, he has a $6 million player option with the Kings this season that I could see him opting into. The last guy would be Harry Giles, another Kings big man. But the Kings declined that fourth year option on Giles, so there's a chance that that um, he will be leaving them in this upcoming off season. They're only able to give him four million dollars, I believe, in uh, free agency. So if a team like the Pistons, that's in a rebuild and is looking to bring in an influx of young talent, would like to sign a guy like Harry Giles, all they would probably have to give him is like a one year, six million dollar deal, and he could come on provide some minutes in the front court and potentially be a guy for your rebuild moving forward that could be a long-term asset and a solid piece for you in this upcoming rebuild that the Pistons are going going to be entering. Finally, they do need to add a backup big man 
even if they do sign Christian Wood, he would be the only real center on this roster. So I do think that bringing back Thon Maker or John Henson could be a solid idea. Maker does have some potential, especially if he can put on weight. He's still a young guy, and if he can get more muscular, then his ability as a stretch big man could be a valuable asset to an NBA team moving forward. If he can also improve that three-point shot and get it from 34% up towards 38%, that could make him a much more viable rotational piece for an NBA team moving forward. John Henson is a guy that I like due to his bounce uh, he's really good at finishing in the paint, had one of the higher paint field goal percentages this past season, so I think that he's a solid rebounder and rim protector as well, so for those reasons, he's a guy you could look to retain if you're the Pistons and establish as your backup center. Otherwise, uh, Bismack Biombo could play a similar role to what I said for Henson as a guy who's going to be a rim runner and finisher on offense and on defense is going to be a rim protector and rebounder. So that is what I think the Pistons should do in the upcoming free agency. Look to retain Christian Wood, sign some cheap tradable veterans, and sign some reclamation projects. Let me know in the comment section below what you think the Pistons should do in this upcoming free agency process. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. That's it for me. Ladies and gentlemen, I will see you all again very soon.